The WRC license didn't get off to the best of starts under the guidance of Kyloton. But over the last couple of years, the developer has really come into its own and become increasingly confident in its abilities. Last year's WRC 9 in particular was a solid treat for rally racing sim fans, and the hope is that the upcoming WRC 10 is going to keep that series upward trajectory going. We're less than a month away from the game's launch at this point, and there's plenty that we've learned about it so far. So here, we're going to take a look at the key details that you should know about WRC 10. A quick note before we move forward. Please consider subscribing and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. And while you're at it, please click like if you enjoyed this video. It really helps us out. With that out of the way, let's begin. Rallies. Obviously, WRC 10 is going to include rallies from the new WRC season, which means the new rallies are also going to be included in the game. Of the 12 rounds of the season in the game, four of them are new rallies, namely the Croatia Rally, Rally Estonia, Rally de Catalunya in Spain, and the Ypres Rally in Belgium. History Mode WRC 10's launch coincides with a monumental occasion for the sport itself, but with the World Rally Championship celebrating its 50th anniversary. The game itself is going to commemorate that in a number of ways, which includes a history mode. As its name suggests, this mode will include 19 iconic events from throughout WRC history for players to experience. Historical Rallies Of course, with historic events being included in the game, you can also expect some classic rallies and cars to also be featured. Where the former is concerned, WRC 10 is going to include six classic rallies, in addition to the events from the 2021 season. Of these six, a few have already been confirmed so far, including the likes of Acropolis Rally in Greece and Rally San Remo in Italy. Historical Cars So what about classic cars though? WRC 10 is promising a pretty vast and robust roster of vehicles on offer, and of these, 20 of them are going to be legendary cars from across WRC history, from the likes of Subaru, Mitsubishi, Alpine, Audi, Ford, Toyota, Lancia, and more. A few of the classic cars that have been confirmed so far are the Alpine A110, the Lancia Delta Group A, the Citroen Zara WRC, and the Audi Quattro. Teams and Stages the WRC games always display a lot of love for the sport, which usually materializes as comprehensive authenticity. And in its bid to be the most comprehensive WRC experience on offer, this year's game is going to have a total of 52 teams, pulled in from WRC, WRC2, WRC3, and Junior WRC. In addition, there's also going to be a total of 120 stages for players to race through. Career Mode the WRC games have consistently been improving their career mode offerings year over year, and WRC 10 is promising some interesting improvements as well. The highlighting addition in this year's game is the new livery editor, which means players are now going to be able to create their own teams. You can now also apply your own colors to cars, while the career mode will also feature better progression, crew management, and more. Physics Physics are supremely important in any game that's claiming to be an authentic racing simulation experience, which of course applies to WRC 10 as well, which is promising to improve on the solid foundations of its predecessor in this area. Crucially, the game has new suspension and aero models, which will introduce some dynamism to how different cars behave on different surfaces and terrains, while turbo and braking systems have also received overhauls. Visuals WRC as a series doesn't come close to the likes of Dirt Rally, Gran Turismo, or Forza Motorsport when it comes to visuals and production qualities, but they haven't been anything to scoff at either. With WRC 10, developer Kyloton is continuing to make further improvements, which includes added detail to roads and surfaces, improved vegetation, and more. All in all, it looks like there's going to be a greater level of detail in all of the stages and cars, which does sound like an exciting improvement. Audio Design Just as important as the visuals in a racing sim is the audio design, if not more, and WRC 10 is making some key improvements here as well. 
Specific details are unknown right now, but Kyloton has said that the game's audio has been completely reworked, with plenty of emphasis being put on ensuring that each car sounds meaningfully different from others. Given the series' constant bid for greater immersion, improved audio should be a pretty big deal for WRC10. Challenges WRC10 is going to have plenty of content to keep players busy, it seems. And while the likes of career mode, co-op, and online play are going to make up the lion's share of your playtime in the game, there's other ancillary stuff on offer as well. Specifically, there will be daily, weekly, and special challenges for players to take on. So even if you're looking to dive in for short, bite-sized sessions of gameplay, WRC10 is still probably going to have you covered. Price and Pre-Order Bonus WRC10 is going to be a little costlier on new-gen consoles, which is a trend that a few games have been following these days. On PS4 and Xbox One, the Standard Edition will cost $49.99, while on the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, it'll be priced at $59.99. Meanwhile, if you pre-order the game, you'll also get a couple of bonuses in the form of the 1997 Subaru Impreza and an exclusive historic event. Deluxe Edition There will of course also be a Deluxe Edition. In addition to the base game, both current and next-gen versions, the package will also include the aforementioned pre-order bonuses, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 5, the Arena Panzerplatt SSS DLC, a career starter pack that includes 6 crew cards and delivery graphics to get you started, and 48 hours of early access to the game. PC Requirements if you're planning on playing the game on PC, you'll obviously be more concerned with its system requirements, which thankfully aren't terribly demanding. Minimum requirements will require either an Intel Core i5-2300 or an AMD FX-6300, along with either a GeForce GT 1030 or AMD Radeon R7. Recommended settings, meanwhile, will need either an Intel Core i7-4790K or AMD Ryzen 5 2600, along with either a GeForce GTX 1070 or an AMD Radeon RX Vega 56. Switch Launch WRC10 is launching on September 2nd for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC. A Nintendo Switch version of the game is also confirmed, but if you do plan on playing it on a Nintendo's hybrid, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Nacon says that the Switch version is going to arrive a little later on than the other systems, though an exact release date for it is currently unknown. And that brings us to the end of the video. A quick request before we conclude. We upload new videos every single day, and if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.